Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Thank you, Andrew, for bringing the Word and the truth of God, the love of God, the Holy Spirit, to all of us throughout the world because it is a word and an encouragement that we all need. Thank you, Andrew. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series that I've entitled 10 Godly Leadership Essentials. And this is a little booklet that I wrote. This is just a 55 page booklet that summarizes the topic. But at our Summer Family Bible Conference, I caught, taught on this in greater length. And you can either get a USB that will share the audio and the video, or you can just get an audio, or you can get the video. We'll be making the offer at the end of our program. But this little booklet is my free gift to you. And so uh, if you just call or ask for this, this is a brief summary. These other things will go into more detail. So what I talked about last week, I started talking about that really godly leadership comes from a godly relationship with the Lord. Really, you could just say that if you have a dynamic relationship with God over a prolonged period of time, it's going to produce every one of these elements in you. You don't have to seek vision. You don't have to seek anointing. You don't have to seek all of these things that I'll be talking about. If you are just seeking the Lord, all of these things will be added unto you. And so, in a sense, what I'm doing is just talking about things that come out of our relationship with the Lord. But for the purpose of discussion, I've broken them into 10 essential elements. The first one is an intimate relationship with God. Paul said, follow me as I follow the Lord. If you aren't following the Lord, then you aren't going to make a godly leader. If you have an intimate relationship with the Lord, the second thing that it will produce is humility to where you are loving God and serving God more than you're serving yourself. If you are self-willed and if it's all about promoting yourself, you are not going to make a godly leader. That doesn't mean you can't lead other people. we got a lot of leaders today, but very few godly leaders. A godly leader is a person who's humbled themselves and is serving God more than they're serving themselves. They aren't just doing these things for self-promotion and, and so that they can have a large ego. If you have a good relationship which produces humility, that will also produce character and integrity. And those are the things that we've already talked about. The next thing I want to talk about, the fourth thing in these 10 uh, uh, godly leadership essentials is about an ability to hear God's voice. And again, this is so important. There are people that will seek God and get a word from God, but if you don't have the relationship with God, the humility that a dynamic relationship produces and the character and integrity that that builds into you, and if you, even if you have a word from God, you, you're going to wind up going out and ruining the whole thing. The Lord won't tell you everything. He won't give you every single detail that you will need for the rest of your life. He'll give you a direction to go. He will show you broad things about what He wants, but He will make it so that you have to be dependent upon Him. You have to have a relationship with Him on a day-to-day -day basis in order to really fulfill that. So there are some people that will seek the Lord in spurts. They may get a word from God, but then they will take that word and they will go out and make a paragraph out of it. They will add things to it. They will interpret it and put it into their way of thinking and they don't go about it God's kind of way. This is why so many people, what they do is go to a seminar or they see somebody who is successful and who God is using and they just go and try and mimic them. They aren't hearing directly from God. They're just trying to do what they see work for somebody else. Did you know that when uh, Joshua walked around the city of Jericho and then on the seventh day they shouted and the walls fell down flat and they went in and conquered it? That was one of the greatest battle plans in history. But did you know they never used it again? They went in and they fought battle after battle and they never did it that way again. There's a lot of people that they'll seek God. They may get a word from God. It may work in that individual situation, but may, God may not want you to do things the same way. The Lord would heal people by different methods. 
He would spit on the ground, make clay, and, and put it on somebody's eyes. Other people, he told them just to believe, and they, he didn't even have to go touch them. He didn't have to do anything. He ministered to people different ways. You need to be able to hear the voice of God to be a godly leader. You don't need to just be copying what somebody else is doing, and it worked for them, and so this is what you're going to do. See, again, all of this, you, every single one of these things is just a... Uh, dynamic of a relationship with God. If you were truly listening to God, then instead of you just copying somebody else, you would have this relationship. God would speak directly to you, and you would do things. You know, the Lord spoke to me about giving my materials away, and I'm not going to spend the whole program today talking about how that happened, but that happened way, way back. Not in, I mean, the early 70s. I think it was around 73 is when God spoke to me about giving my materials away. Now, see, that was... I didn't have a model for that. At the time, I had never heard of any minister in the history of the world giving everything away. Now, there may have been some, but I had never heard about it. Since that time, I know two or three people. I've seen some people who have seen it working for me, and they've started doing it. But at the time, it was just a word from God. God told me, to give my materials away. And we quit counting at about 200 million free books, CDs, DVDs, cassette tapes, all of these kind of things. And that is not including all of the millions of downloads that we have per month off of our website. These are hard materials that we've put out, hundreds of millions of things. We've given it away. And, you know, that came out of relationship with God. I didn't see it in somebody else. I didn't parrot it. I didn't copy it. I wasn't an echo. This was a voice that God came to me. And looking back, I think it's one of the best things I ever did. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough faith to be able to do that. If the Lord would have told me back in 72 or 73 when He spoke that to me, if he would have told me back then that I would have given away hundreds of millions of books and it would have cost me hundreds of millions of dollars, that probably would have overwhelmed me and I, I'm not sure that I would have had enough faith to do it. But I was just in relationship with God. I didn't know the size of the ministry. I didn't know how much this was going to cost me and it's just something that God put on my heart and I said it and I've held to it. I've even had people that were ministers, and I mean very well-known ministers, uh, and influential people come to me and prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, you need to quit giving your things away. You need to start charging for all of this. And you know what? It's just a word from God to me, and I followed it, and it's worked. And because of it, I've had, I don't know the exact number, but I would say probably 50% of the people who get materials from me, they do it because it's free not necessarily because they have uh, liked me that much or anything. It's I remember one lady came and, and she liked some other people, but they were charging for all their materials. I'm the only one that gave it away free, and so she got my stuff just because it was free. And she started listening to it, and it transformed her life. And then she came and told me about that. So anyway, you've got to be able to hear God's voice. The Scripture says this in Proverbs chapter 3. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. See, this is talking about, again, relationship with God. You aren't leaning unto your own understanding. That goes along with humility. There's a lot of people that think that they are smarter than God, and they know that God said to do this, but they think, Oh, man, it would be much better if I do this. That's leaning under your own understanding. This is talking about having a relationship with God that produces humility to where you defer to God. You believe God is smarter and wiser than you and you follow His directions. You aren't trying to get Him to follow your directions. That puts limitations, restrictions on you, which I call character and integrity. And as you do that, well, then you are listening to God's voice. You aren't just following your own heart. You aren't following your own thinking. And notice here when it says that we are supposed to acknowledge Him in the Hebrew, that Hebrew word that was translated there, it says to uh, know God intimately. So acknowledging Him here isn't just acknowledging that He exists, but this is talking about intimacy. Again, all of these things 
come out of relationship with God. If you have a poor relationship with God, you're going to have a poor record on hearing Him speak to you. God isn't wanting just to send you out there. God is wanting to touch you. He's wanting to have a relationship with you more than He's wanting to use you. God loves you more than He loves what you can do for Him. And yet there's a lot of people that you admit that you don't spend much time with the Lord. You've got your life so busy with all of these other things that you consider more important that you just don't have time. Your relationship with the Lord is struggling and yet you're trying to get a word from God and trying to understand what He wants you to do. That's not the way that it works. You don't have God just speak to you and use you. He, what He wants is relationship with you and then hearing God's voice comes out of that relationship. You know, I'm not going to spend multiple days talking about this, not because it's not important, but I just got through teaching about four steps or four ways that God speaks to us. And so I recently did this and I'm going to move on to some other things. But it is really important that you hear God's voice and not somebody else's voice or your own voice. There are many voices in this world today. Not every thought not every desire that you have is from God. And you've got to be able to rightly decide and discern whether this thought, this impression, this desire, this uh, direction that you're headed with your life, is it God or is it you? And the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, The word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. If you were to go back to this teaching I did about four ways that God speaks to you, speaking through the Word of God, the Word of God will separate between your carnal desires, your carnal thoughts, and the spiritual thoughts that are coming from God. If you don't have a working knowledge of the Word of God, I guarantee you, you are going to be deceived and you are going to miss God speaking to you. But as I taught in that series over in John chapter 10, Jesus said, His sheep do hear His voice and the voice of a stranger they won't follow. God is speaking to us constantly. But again, it is, it's a part of relationship with God. You know, one of the scriptures that influenced me in a powerful way is found over in Acts chapter 9, and it's just a real simple scripture. Most people pass over this and don't think about it. But it was about after Paul had had his miraculous encounter with the Lord on the way to Damascus, he was blinded by the light. He was taken to Damascus, and he was in a house, and the Lord appeared or spoke unto Ananias and said, Ananias. And Ananias just said, Behold, I am here. Now, most people just skip over something like that, and it doesn't do much for him. But boy, I was studying that. I mean, this has been 45, 50 years ago. I was studying the Word, and the Lord just used that and spoke to me and said, Andrew, how many times have I spoken to you and you weren't there? You were busy doing something else. You were occupied with your own thing. Ananias was just there. And there isn't any scriptural record that God ever used him uh, to minister to anybody else. Now, I suspect that he did, but there's not a scriptural record of it. There's certainly nobody that he ministered to who had such a big impact as the Apostle Paul. I mean, this was a notable thing, but it all started with him just being in relationship with God. He was just there. It's possible that maybe the Lord wanted to use somebody else to go speak to Paul, but they weren't there. They were out doing their own thing. They weren't in relationship. Again, I'm saying that instead of just trying to get a word from God so that you can go do something and feel like you're making your life significant, what you need to do is just seek the Lord. And as you're in relationship with the Lord, and if you will yield yourself, He will work humility and character into your life. And once that happens, I can guarantee you, God wants to use you more than you want to be used. God has a plan for every single one of us. Over in Psalms 139, it talks about that before we were even formed in our mother's womb, God had already written all of our days in our book. He doesn't make us fulfill what He's written, but He had a plan written out. He created you with the purpose. 
AND GOD WANTS TO USE YOU MORE THAN YOU WANT TO BE USED. BUT INSTEAD OF GOING AND SAYING, OH, GOD, USE ME, AND oh, GOD, SHOW ME WHAT YOU WANT ME TO DO, WHAT YOU NEED TO DO IS JUST GET TO WHERE YOU SEEK THE LORD, NOT FOR WHAT HE CAN DO FOR YOU, NOT FOR SO THAT YOU CAN USE HIM TO GET TO A POSITION OR A PLACE, BUT JUST SEEK HIM. JUST SEEK HIM BECAUSE YOU LOVE HIM, THAT YOU WANT TO KNOW HIM. AND I PROMISE YOU, AS YOU GET TO WHERE YOU KNOW HIM AND AS YOU SUBMIT YOURSELF, WHICH IS HUMILITY, YOU'RE EXALTING HIM AND him, HIS WILL ABOVE YOUR WILL, THAT WILL PUT CHARACTER AND INTEGRITY IN YOUR LIFE, AND IT IS JUST A BYPRODUCT OF RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THAT YOU WILL BEGIN TO HEAR THE VOICE OF GOD. YOU KNOW, THE VOICE OF GOD, AS IT SAYS IN JOHN CHAPTER 10, HE SPEAKS TO HIS SHEEP. HE'S ALWAYS SPEAKING. IT'S NOT GOD WHO'S NOT SPEAKING. IT'S US WHO CAN'T HEAR HIM BECAUSE ALL OF THE OTHER VOICES AND THE THINGS THAT WE FILL OURSELVES WITH, THEY DROWN OUT THE VOICE OF GOD. OVER IN 1 KINGS CHAPTER 19, THERE'S AN INSTANCE WHERE uh, ELIJAH HAD JUST CALLED FIRE DOWN OUT OF HEAVEN. HE SAW A TREMENDOUS REVIVAL. THE PEOPLE FELL ON THEIR FACE AND SAID, THE LORD, HE IS THE GOD. THE LORD, HE IS THE GOD. AND YET, JEZEBEL THREATENED HIS LIFE, AND HE GOT AFRAID, AND HE RAN. AND HE GOT TO MOUNT SINAI, AND ANYWAY, GOD uh, SPOKE TO HIM AND SAID, WHAT ARE YOU DOING HERE, ELIJAH? HE SHOULD HAVE BEEN BACK THERE AND LEADING THIS REVIVAL. THESE PEOPLE WERE READY. THEY HAD SEEN THE SUPERNATURAL MANIFESTATION OF GOD, AND YET ELIJAH GOT IN THE FLESH AND RAN AND WAS IN THE WRONG PLACE. AND SO THE LORD SPOKE TO HIM, AND ANYWAY, ELIJAH RESPONDED INCORRECTLY. INSTEAD OF SAYING, WELL, I'M WRONG AND I, I REPENT AND FORGIVE ME, INSTEAD HE STARTED TRYING TO JUSTIFY HIMSELF AND HE SAYS, I'M THE ONLY ONE SERVING YOU. I'M THE ONLY ONE LEFT. HE KNEW THAT WAS A LIE. OBADIAH, ONE OF THE SERVANTS OF THE KING, HAD TOLD HIM THERE WERE STILL A HUNDRED PROPHETS THAT HE WAS FEEDING DURING THIS DROUGHT IN A CAVE AND TAKING CARE OF THEM. SO ELIJAH KNEW HE WASN'T THE ONLY ONE, BUT HE FELT THAT WAY. HE WAS HAVING A PITY PARTY AND THOUGHT NOBODY UNDERSTOOD. SO HE TRIED TO JUSTIFY HIMSELF. SO THE LORD TOLD HIM TO GO OUT INTO THE ENTRANCE OF THIS CAVE AND STAND THERE, AND IT SAYS THAT A MIGHTY WIND PASSED BY, AND IT WAS SO STRONG THAT IT CAUSED THE BOULDERS TO ROLL. IT BROKE BOULDERS. THEN THERE WAS A MIGHTY FIRE. THEN THERE WAS AN EARTHQUAKE THAT SPLIT THE BOULDERS. BUT GOD WASN'T IN ANY OF THESE SUPERNATURAL, DRAMATIC THINGS. YOU KNOW, THE THING THAT FINALLY GOT ELIJAH, IT SAYS, AFTER ALL OF THOSE GREAT EXPERIENCES, THERE WAS JUST A STILL, SMALL VOICE. AND WHEN ELIJAH HEARD THAT, HE WENT OUT INTO THE ENTRANCE OF THE CAVE. HE WRAPPED HIS FACE IN HIS MANTLE AND WAS AFRAID TO LOOK ON GOD, AND GOD BEGAN TO SPEAK TO HIM. I'M TELLING YOU, MANY PEOPLE ARE LOOKING FOR THE VOICE OF GOD IN THESE DRAMATIC WAYS. THEY'RE WANTING AN ANGEL TO APPEAR. THEY'RE WANTING AN AUDIBLE VOICE. THEY'RE ASKING GOD FOR TWO CATS TO WALK THIS WAY AND A DOG TO CROSS THE OTHER WAY, AND THEY'RE WANTING, YOU KNOW, THEY'RE JUST LOOKING FOR ALL OF THESE SIGNS. THEY'RE WANTING SOMETHING ELSE. BUT REALLY, THE REAL DIRECTION, THE VOICE OF GOD, IT CAN BE HEARD IN MIRACULOUS WAYS. YOU KNOW, EVEN IN JESUS' MINISTRY IN JOHN CHAPTER 12, THERE WAS AN AUDIBLE VOICE THAT CAME OUT OF HEAVEN THAT OTHER PEOPLE HEARD. AND SO GOD CAN DO ANYTHING, BUT THE VAST MAJORITY OF TIMES, GOD IS JUST GOING TO SPEAK TO YOU IN A STILL, SMALL VOICE. AND IF YOU HAVE THE VOLUME ON THE WORLD TURNED UP SO LOUD, IT'LL DROWN OUT WHAT GOD'S GOT TO SAY. I'VE SEEN STATISTICS THAT THE AVERAGE PERSON IN AMERICA, SPENDS FOUR TO FIVE HOURS A DAY ON THEIR PHONE, READING THINGS, uh, YOU KNOW, TEXTING, LOOKING AT THINGS, AND DOING ALL OF THIS KIND OF STUFF. IF YOU SPEND FOUR TO FIVE HOURS A DAY HAVING THE SEWAGE OF THIS WORLD PUMPED THROUGH YOU, I GUARANTEE YOU IT'S GOING TO AFFECT YOUR ABILITY TO HEAR THE VOICE OF GOD. YOU NEED TO BE STILL AND KNOW THAT HE IS GOD, PSALMS 46.10. AND WHEN YOU GET STILL AND LISTEN, GOD IS ALWAYS SPEAKING, BUT YOU SOMETIMES DON'T HEAR IT JUST BECAUSE YOU'RE BUSY AND YOU DON'T... IT'S NOT CONDUCIVE TO HEARING THE VOICE OF GOD. YOU KNOW, I'VE, I've USED THAT VERSE, PSALMS 4610, HUNDREDS, MAYBE THOUSANDS OF TIMES, AND YET ONE TIME I HAD A DREAM, AND IN THIS DREAM IT WAS LIKE I SAW THIS TICKER TAPE GOING, AND IT SAID PSALMS 4610. AND FOR THE LIFE OF ME, EVEN THOUGH I'VE QUOTED THAT VERSE SO MANY TIMES, I JUST COULD NOT THINK OF WHAT IT SAID. SO I WENT AND LOOKED IT UP, AND WHEN I LOOKED IT UP, OF COURSE, I RECOGNIZED IT, 
AND IT SAYS, BE STILL AND KNOW THAT I AM GOD. AND SO I FELT LIKE THIS WAS GOD SPEAKING TO ME. JAMIE WENT INTO TOWN TO DO SHOPPING, AND I THINK THAT PSALMS 4610, WHEN IT TALKS ABOUT BEING STILL, IS TALKING ABOUT MORE THAN JUST NOT MOVING. I THINK IT'S TALKING ABOUT QUIETING YOURSELF DOWN, GETTING RID OF ALL OF THIS OTHER VOICES AND EVERYTHING, AND JUST BEING FOCUSED ON GOD. BUT JUST TO MAKE SURE, I WAS BY MYSELF. I WAS AT HOME BY MYSELF. I GOT AND SAT OUT ON THE DECK. THIS WAS IN THE SUMMER. IT WAS A BEAUTIFUL DAY, AND I JUST SAT OUT ON OUR DECK, AND I MEAN FOR OVER AN HOUR, I DIDN'T MOVE A MUSCLE. ALL I DID WAS BLINK. I WASN'T DOING ANYTHING. I JUST FROZE BECAUSE I WANTED TO SEE WHAT IT WAS THAT GOD WAS WANTING TO SPEAK TO ME. AND YOU KNOW, ONE OF THE THINGS THAT HAPPENED OUT OF THAT WAS THAT I JUST NOTICED THINGS THAT WERE ALWAYS THERE, BUT I DIDN'T NOTICE THEM BECAUSE I WAS BUSY. I WAS ALWAYS DOING SOMETHING ELSE. I NOTICED THAT THERE WAS THOUSANDS OF ANTS EVERYWHERE. I HAD CHIPMUNKS THAT WERE JUST ALL OVER THE PLACE. I HAD ONE COME CRAWL UP ON MY LAP BECAUSE I WAS SO STILL AND DIDN'T MOVE, AND IT ACTUALLY CRAWLED UP MY LEG, AND I JUST SAT THERE. I HAD A DEER THAT WALKED UP AND NEARLY TOUCHED THEIR NOSE TO MY NOSE. THEY COULD SEE ME, BUT DEER HAVE POOR EYESIGHT. THEY DEPEND A LOT ON SMELL. AND ON MOVEMENT AND THINGS LIKE THAT. And BECAUSE I WASN'T MOVING AND BECAUSE I WAS DOWNWIND FROM THIS DEER, IT CAME UP AND IT NEARLY TOUCHED ME. AND I JUST NOTICED THINGS. I SAW BIRDS FLY BY THAT IN THE PAST I'D SEEN THEM, BUT I, I WAS SO QUIET, I WAS SO STILL THAT I COULD HEAR the, THE SOUND OF THEIR WINGS AS THEY WENT BY. AND SO ANYWAY, OUT OF THAT EXPERIENCE, WHAT HAPPENED WAS I JUST BEGAN TO NOTICE THINGS THAT WERE ALWAYS THERE, BUT I WAS JUST TOO BUSY, TOO OCCUPIED, TO PAY ANY ATTENTION TO IT. AND SEE, THIS IS WHAT HAPPENS WHEN YOU SHUT OFF ALL OF THE INPUT OF THE WORLD AND YOU JUST PUT YOURSELF IN A POSITION TO WHERE, GOD, I'M HERE. I'm LIKE ANANIAS, BEHOLD, I'M HERE, LORD. AND MAYBE HE HAS NOTHING TO SAY with you, TO YOU, BUT YOU'RE JUST THERE IN CASE. YOU ARE JUST THERE. GOD, SPEAK FOR YOUR SERVANT HEARS, IS WHAT uh, SAMUEL SAID. AND YOU JUST NEED TO PUT YOURSELF IN A POSITION TO WHERE YOU ARE LISTENING. GOD IS ALWAYS SPEAKING. AND IF YOU ARE GOING TO BE A GODLY LEADER, YOU NEED TO BE ABLE TO HEAR THE VOICE OF GOD AND NOT JUST PARROT WHAT OTHERS ARE SAYING, NOT JUST MIMIC WHAT THEY ARE DOING. YOU NEED TO BE ABLE TO HAVE A PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THAT IS VIBRANT AND IT'S REAL. AND LIKE THIS SAYS, YOU NEED TO KNOW HIM, ACKNOWLEDGE HIM IN A WAY THAT YOU HAVE THIS INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP AND YOU CAN JUST HEAR WHAT GOD WANTS YOU TO DO. GOD HAS GIVEN US THE PRIVILEGE OF CHOOSING HOW TO LIVE OUR LIFE. HE DOESN'T FORCE US TO FOLLOW HIM. BUT THE RIGHT CHOICE IS TO RECOGNIZE LIKE JEREMIAH 10, 23, O LORD, I KNOW THAT THE WAY OF MAN IS NOT IN HIMSELF. IT IS NOT IN MAN THAT WALKS TO DIRECT HIS STEPS. YOU NEED TO BE SMART ENOUGH TO SAY, GOD, I, I YIELD TO YOU. I WANT TO HEAR FROM YOU. HOW DO YOU WANT ME TO HANDLE THIS? WHAT DO YOU WANT ME TO DO? IF YOU ARE GOING TO BE A GODLY LEADER, YOU NEED TO BE IN TUNE WITH GOD AND HEARING HIS VOICE. MAN, THAT'S AWESOME. AGAIN, THIS LITTLE BOOK ON 10 GODLY LEADERSHIP ESSENTIALS IS A 55-PAGE BOOK THAT I'VE WRITTEN, AND IT'S JUST A BRIEF SUMMARY. I'VE GOT THIS SAME TEACHING IN MORE DETAIL. I TAUGHT IT AT OUR SUMMER FAMILY BIBLE CONFERENCE ON 10 GODLY LEADERSHIP ESSENTIALS. AND YOU CAN GET THIS USB THAT'LL HAVE THE AUDIO AND VIDEO ON IT. YOU CAN GET CD'S, YOU CAN GET DVD'S, AND uh, YOU CAN ALSO GET A DVD THAT WAS MADE FROM THESE TELEVISION PROGRAMS. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER, AND PLEASE CALL OUR RIGHT TODAY. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS IN GALATIANS CHAPTER 6, AND IN VERSE uh, verse 6, IT SAYS, LET HIM THAT IS TAUGHT IN THE WORD COMMUNICATE UNTO HIM THAT TEACHETH IN ALL GOOD THINGS. THIS IS JUST SAYING THAT IF YOU SOW SPIRITUAL THINGS INTO A PERSON'S LIFE, YOU SHOULD REAP BACK FINANCIAL THINGS. IT TAKES MONEY TO KEEP THE MINISTRY GOING. AND YOU KNOW, GOD HAS BEEN VERY GOOD TO US, AND WE NOW uh, ARE ABLE TO BROADCAST to, TO A POTENTIAL OF OVER 5 BILLION PEOPLE. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THERE ARE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE THAT HAVE BEEN TOUCHED AND TAUGHT, AND YET THERE ARE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE THAT HAVE NEVER SEWN BACK. I'M NOT SAYING THIS OUT OF BITTERNESS OR HURT OR ANYTHING LIKE THAT, BUT I AM SAYING THAT WE ARE IN THE PROCESS OF BUILDING OUT OUR Caris BIBLE COLLEGE CAMPUS, AND IT'S GOING TO COST HUNDREDS OF MILLIONS OF DOLLARS TO DO THIS. 
We've got many people that are wanting to come that cannot find housing and they aren't willing to live under a bridge. And so we need housing. We are now in the process of doing it. But in order to get this done, I need people to help me. And I can't just ask the students to pay for these hundreds of millions of dollars worth of buildings. I need people to help me. And if I have sown into your life, and if I've been a blessing, and if God has touched you, I'm asking you to join with me and help us train up these world changers that are gonna go out and make a difference. You can go to awmi.net slash campus and we have a artist rendering a flyover that goes through the buildings and we'll show you what we're planning on building and then there's also a place there that you can join with us and help us uh, build these buildings to accommodate more people coming and learning about the Lord through Karis Bible College. So go to awmi.net slash campus, check out the video and then join with me and become a foundation builder. Andrew is offering his brand new booklet, 10 Godly Leadership Essentials, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's brand new series, 10 Godly Leadership Essentials, is available in a CD and TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. This teaching is also available in a CD and DVD album or USB recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. Go to our website at awmc.ca and click on Today's TV Offer under the Store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I'd like to offer you what we call a healing masterclass. It's a free teaching to you, just sharing some of the nuggets, some of the revelations that God has given us on healing. It's absolutely free to you. And so all you have to do, if you'll follow the instructions that are on the screen, it'll tell you how you can receive this. And I believe it would be a blessing. This free offer is only available for a limited time. Receive Healing Masterclass by visiting awmi.net slash masterclass today. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? Follow Andrew on social media today. I want to let all of you know who are watching our program in Canada that we have a Canadian office. We also have a website, awmc.ca. And you can go there and you can get all of our materials sent to you from our Canadian office. You can become a partner with us and give and the money will stay right there to help us reach people in Canada. We would love to help you and minister to you any way we can. To learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca.